started a, started a stream. It's ramping up. Are we alive? Time for one last chip. We are alive. I'm not eating anything. What's up, guys? I'm professional. Welcome back to part two of Awesome Hardware, episode 36. If you didn't catch part A and you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and check out Paul's channel, Paul's Hardware, watch part A, and then come back here. Or watch part B first, and then watch part A if you're feeling ballsy. And you're just living life on the edge. Either way, it doesn't matter. That's a B. That's a B. B for blood. No, it's a D. That's a B. It's a D. <clears throat> I usually just do both at the same time. I'm like, yeah, just pick the one that works. That's blood. How do you know how to do that? Set up. Uh, I'm out of beer. Scary. Oh. Uh-oh. What do we do now? Kyle's going to introduce the show while I go get another beer. Okay, I'll introduce the show. Okay. Really? <laughs> I want a beer. Okay, go. Okay. It's just me and you now, guys. My shirt will be off when Paul returns. Um, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Uh, but a couple things to point out in case you miss uh, the first half of the show. We do have some merchandise that we are selling. Of course, as always, we've got shirts in the Awesome Sauce merch store as well as paulshardware.net slash store. Or no, it's store.paulshardware.net or something like that. Oh, man, this is falling apart rapidly. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and go to the main camera here or the lower third. No, that's not right. I don't know how to work this thing. Paul's bottle is in the way of OBS, and I can't see shit right now. So let's go ahead to stories. Haha! -ha! Now you can see my store. Haha! -ha! Kyle, Kyle learns OBS in this episode of Awesome Hardware. Uh, go ahead and purchase a, a shirt or a hoodie. I am all sold out of the traditional Awesome Sauce Network logo shirts, but I do have the battery sauce in stock in a couple sizes. Uh, go ahead and check those out. Also, Paul has glassware. He's got shirts. He's got... You know, you should just really have some glasses. You should have, like, some Paul's Hardware glasses. Thank God you're back! I'm back! Things have deteriorated at an alarming rate! How are you doing? No, I'm doing fine. Okay. I'm doing fine. It was it was completely dark downstairs. Was it really? I, rea I At first I was like, I'm going to have to feel my way through here, and then I realized I have a flashlight on my phone. <laughs> we, we also do have electricity in the house. You could have turned on a light switch. I don't know where your light switches are, and it was literally too dark to see. <laughs> like, my, my grandparents have this weird habit, or that's just how they roll, because they were like born in the jungle, of just sitting downstairs in the living room with all the lights completely off. That's cool. And they don't yeah, do anything. I'm, I'm not against that. I just it was I was surprised. But it was creepy when I first moved in because I didn't know they did that. So I'd come home, and it'd be like 11 p.m. at night, and I'd be with Heather. I'm like, oh shoot, you want to get something from the kitchen? And we walk <laughs> into the kitchen, like pitch black. And it's like, welcome home. We're like, what the. F <laughs> Fuck is that? It's like they're just camping so, there. So since for you. since then, after f finding out that information, we uh, we call them grampires because they like to chill in, in the ah. in the nighttime, in the pitch black dark. Makes they're sense. they're allergic to light. How but, far did you get? Uh, just talked about our shirts. Okay. Um, I did want to also mention the whole uh, epicpants.com. If you will, oh yeah, uh, show them that. So epicpants.com is I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. It's where Logan from Tech Syndicate sells all of his awesome merchandise. The reason why we're showing you this, even though it's not my or Paul's store is because now you can get combined uh, shipping discounts from all three of our stores because we all go through the same uh, t-shirt guy. Logan actually referred us, Paul and I, to this guy. His name's John. He's really awesome. This is uh, this this uh, shirt here? Yes. I'm going is... to take, take credit for this shirt. This shirt was my idea. Oh, nice. Yes, Brilliant. We yes, we came. Okay. Should, there should be a Paul's Hardware logo on the back of there somewhere. <laughs> there should. Or some kind of, like, like your signature. Piece. Your signature at the bottom right. Uh, so go ahead and... Buy stuff from all of us is the point yes. I'm trying to make. Uh, there's Order it also all at once it gets shipped together, you yes. get a you get a refund for part of the shipping cost. You won't see the refund when you're checking out. If you're buying from all of us, you'll get it later. But but don't be worried if you don't see it while you're checking out. Uh, another big announcement, and Paul and I have really been lagging on this, but a few weeks back on the show, I think it was episode 33 or so. We announced that we were looking for a new Awesome Hardware logo. Yes, we, we did. We forgot to mention this in part A of the show. Uh, but since then, you guys have been doing a great job of, of tweeting us your pictures and your ideas and your concepts and your logos and your designs uh, to both of our Twitter accounts. And I just wanted to say that we lost all that shit. And we no longer have any of it. <laughs> Because we're irresponsible but, uh, adults that are basically I think, children I think inside. Both of us were under the impression that the other person, every time they got a tweet with a picture, was like gathering them. And then I was like, "Did you do that?" And I was like, "No." Did you do that? And I was like, "No." So we saw many of them. We're incredibly appreciative for all those that were sent in. But if you happen to do a design, 
please drop it in an email and yes. send it to awesomehardwarerules at gmail.com. Right. Awesomehardwarerules at gmail.com. Rules Just spelled regularly. R-U-L-E-S. Right. No, no Z. Yeah, no Z's in there. Um, we're not 12. So that way we can keep track of all your logos and designs, and we'll actually pick one of them relatively soon. We're going to give you, give you guys a week or so, I'm going to say, just to send in those designs again. Again, if you already send it to us on Twitter, email it to us, the same design that you had originally because we lost it. Uh, and if, you, if we happen to choose your logo or we get inspired by your logo uh, for our next t-shirt design, our next first ever joint awesome hardware t-shirt, then uh, you'll definitely get some, uh, some prizes sent your way from both of us. Uh, and that's pretty much it for that, announcements. That will be pleasant. That's very important. Also, if you order something from both of our, either of our stores during the show, we'll yell Johnson at you. Yes. And okay. it will it will uh, scare you and arouse you. And it will be good at the same time. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Let's move on to news, the first segment of this part of the show, uh, starting with DirectX 12 and all the beautiful things that Microsoft has implement, implemented into it. Uh, in particular, we're going to be talking about multi-adapter uh, functionality in this a this new low level API which is really interesting because it allows you to essentially it allows the developers to basically combine different or dissimilar GPUs in a multi GPU setup wow. whereas right now we're you know very used to like hey you have a 980 Ti you better get a second 980 Ti if you want to take advantage of SLI oh you got a 7870 better get another one of those if you want to take advantage of Crossfire X um, so what this does is it essentially grants the developers of the games more control with multi-GPU rendering. And Anantech, they actually got a, a, a special exclusive build of Ashes of the Singularity, very popular, the first ever DirectX 12 game, uh, that actually allows for this kind of feature, this multi-GPU explicit multi-adapter functionality is what they're calling it, aka mm -hmm. multi-display adapter. There's a Fury X and a 980 Ti here in the same system. Right. And before this whole article, before this phenomenon, that would be a no-no, or it would just be purposeless because would, you wouldn't really it see... It would work, but you could only use one GPU or the other. Exactly. It would be fruitless. Uh, but that, that has all changed. Now, not only can you combine dissimilar GPUs, but the performance gains that you can see from them is actually more impressive than you might think originally. Wow. Uh, yeah, so with, with their testing, um, I don't know if, if, if you're still, yeah, this is the Anantec article. If you go to the one specific page with the, the high-end video card comparisons, they've got a bunch of charts and stuff. Oh, um, the charts. Yes, so go to uh, the one down, yeah, that one. High-end GPUs, if you scroll down, you'll see the chart that has all the different uh, combinations of GPUs that they've tried. Now this is really interesting. The R9 Fury X and the GTX 980 Ti combined takes the lead in this benchmark of Ashes of the Singularity. That actually topped a 980 Ti and a Titan X when combined, which is the fourth one down. And that's with <clears throat> that's with the Fury X as the primary card, and then they also ran it with the 980 Ti as a primary card, which got a little bit a little bit less performance. Right. So so what this tells us is that the order of which card is in the primary slot at the top generally it makes a difference in performance, impact, yeah. um, which is interesting. Even Nantech was uh, whoever wrote this article. I forget who at the moment, but they are not really Ryan complete. Smith. Ryan Smith is not 100% clear on why this is. It could have to do with how uh, each individual vendor of, of GPU, uh, how, how optimized their drivers are for single card implementation or something like that. But this is kind of unprecedented, and we haven't really seen this too much before at all. Uh, in the world of PC gaming. Having two dissimilar GPUs working synchronously and actually getting fairly decent results. Now, unfortunately, Anantech wasn't able, unable to show us any kind of results for same card performance in Ashes of Singularity because the specific benchmark that they, that they were given from the developer Oxide was only built with uh, explicit multi-GPU um, rendering enabled. Oh. You, you'd have to get a separate build that included both explicit and implicit uh, GPU rendering, which would allow then uh, your more traditional SLI or Crossfire configurations. So uh, again, very early alpha testing. I mean, this isn't even an alpha. <laughs> so again, this is all very preliminary and very, uh, you know, I don't know, early, early, too early to tell if this is a real world representation, but it still is interesting because it's the only thing we have to base off uh, as of now. Um, and it should still be considered at least with a grain of salt. Um, so there's a lot of questions that this brings up as well, right? So for example, which which team or you know team red or team green? Which which card or vendor's uh, set of technologies are you actually going to benefit from if you have both of them in your system? 
So, you know, if you have, like, like in the example, if you have a 988 Ti and a, a Fury X, do you only get one or the other? Do you only get GameWorks or do you only get Gaming Evolved or, you know, do you get FreeSync or G-Sync or does it matter or does the order of the cards that, it, that it's being placed in your motherboard, does that affect which kind of technologies do you get access to? Um, there's a lot of questions here. Also, will you be able to switch uh, your GPU positioning when, when uh, having a discrete card with an iGPU? Because this is also supporting um, integrated graphics. So for like a laptop, for example, a DirectX 12 laptop that's fully supported in a DirectX 12 game like Ashes of Singularity, if you have an iGPU <clears throat> plus a discrete you know, mobile video, uh, GPU or now even a, a full, fully blown desktop GPU inside, um, how do you actually change or will you be able to change the positioning of those GPUs based on their effectiveness and based on uh, the performance gains that you might see from either configuration? Uh, there's just a lot of things surrounding this. What does this mean for AMD and NVIDIA, right? Is this a good thing for, for Team Red and Team Green? You know, maybe Team Red's excited because it means more people are going to start piggybacking on... I mean, this, this is a good result to say that, you know, the Fury X is actually more effective when it, in tandem with an IATI than, than a, a Titan X is. I think that <coughs> is probably a plus for, for Team Red, we can say. Yeah. Um, but again, very early to say for sure. Uh, would, would, yeah. I mean, I would also be curious, like... You know, and NVIDIA has been known in the past to block certain things in software with drivers. Right. Um, so, you know, what they're working with right now might be, you know, cobbled together drivers or special versions of the software, whatever that they're actually testing this with. Like, will NVIDIA, will AMD for that matter, <clears throat> be okay with this cross pollution of their products with the competitors' products? Right. Um, well, and is that something that they might? decide to disable via you know via software uh, according to parts in this article it's not really up to amd or nvidia whether or not this is enabled basically one of the one of the features of DirectX 12 is that it puts multi gpu rendering in the hands of the developer and no okay. longer in the drivers themselves that's why they're able to actually combine two dissimilar gpus so it's more so you know it, will they try to find a new way to kind of disable it um, you know, is there, there's always a workaround, right? Maybe there's a way that they can make it disadvantage, disadvantageous, even though they can't disable it completely. Um, but are people it, even going to want to mix it GPUs? Also, it also, like, introduces an interesting question when it, com when it comes to, like, <clears throat> what kind of system do you want to build for gaming? Because if we can right. assume, based on this, that Intel's integrated graphics with their processors are also going to be a party to this, then you might say... If you were to get a hand enthusiast processor from Intel that doesn't have an iGPU, and then you're testing in a DirectX 12 environment that can take advantage of any of the GPUs that are available, then you might get better performance with a mainstream processor that has an iGPU versus not, you know, an enthusiast processor that costs 200 or 500 right. or 1,000 dollars, right? Um, or true. more, yeah, just more money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that that's an interesting question as well. I would like the AMD dual graphics when they came out with it. It implementation wise, it didn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, I liked the idea behind it because you could get that APU and then you add a graphics card and kind of combine mm -hmm. them together. It was really limited, but if DirectX 12 could open that up to make it much more uh, like brand agnostic, like you know you could use whatever the heck you want, right. um, you know, upgrade your graphics card, leave the old graphics card in, and get some additional performance. Um, that's that's exciting. I mean, I, th I think it, I think it. Assuming it works, you know, that broadly, right. um, it's pretty cool. But, uh, I mean, there's, there's still a lot of uh, wait and see, I think, going on, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, guys, let us know in chat what you think of this whole ordeal. Um, personally, I, I don't know if... Uh, let, let us know in chat if you would be willing to crossbreed uh, two different GPUs from Team Red and Team Green solely for performance. Because, obviously, um, you know, there's the whole ordeal of, you know, maybe they don't look as as complete or they don't sync with each other aesthetically in the same system but if it's a matter of performance um you know is is that enough to sway your decision into buying both uh from opposing sides but then also we don't really know what this says until we see the same card benchmarks in this game for the same test yeah because if two gtx 980 ti's simply outperforms an iati and a fury x then you, it's kind of a moot point we're not really uh, too concerned anymore. So, again, 
Very early to tell, but uh, very interesting nonetheless. Indeed. Uh, next up, Rock Band 4 Makers. Rock the Band developers Four. for this game that just launched recently has done very well so far, I might add. Uh, they have been caught posting five-star reviews on Amazon. They're excited about their product. Did they not just hear about the... Did they not just watch Awesome Hardware last yeah, week when we talked about... Yeah, Amazon suing like a thousand something... Clearly, they're not followers the of the show, and they should be punished. Uh, but here's what happened. A bunch of, am, uh, am, uh, I'm sorry, rock band developers, uh, also people who work for the publisher Harmonix of the game, uh, they posted a bunch of really positive reviews, I, uh, you know, obviously, of the game on Amazon. Seven reviews, to be exact, were found by a Redditor who was very inquisitive. This is hilarious. They just used their They used their real names. names. Their How did real... they find them out? It's because they used their real names. But they did actually buy it. They're verified owners. Yeah. Okay. But still, there's a little bit of dishonesty here, I feel. I mean, clearly they're biased. Um, and Harmonix has already admitted the, the mistake, and they've, they've said sorry and stuff. Uh, so, I don't know. This, this, this just happened, and we could probably find some way to turn this into a, a sword fight, of course. <laughs> but this isn't your half of the show, and it's we already did a sword fight, so I can't do that. Damn you for taking that segment! I know. I hate you! It's so good. Ever since day one. It's so good. Um, so yeah, all the all the reviews on Rock Band Four that you read online, don't trust any of them. No, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, it's it's just the ones on Amazon posted just, by by names that happen to also be like listed on LinkedIn as they work for. Uh, for yeah, Rockstar take take Academy. seven of the five star reviews yeah. and just disregard those. Cool. All right. Uh, next up, we've got a crazy, quite literally a crazy mod for GTA Five yet again. The mods just keep pouring in, as as I would hope and expect them to. This one revolves around the Hulk. So you see right here, Bruce Banner. Hulk powers. just looks like a regular dude, right? In a wife beater, like like Bruce Banner. And then boom! I yeah. mean, I would have liked to see his torn clothes on the ground. That would have really uh, cool. added a little bit. But uh, you can do some crazy shit here. Uh, for example, leap. you can jump leap super high in the air. And then when you land, you can kind of do an AOE destructive blast around you from the impact mm -hmm. which is cool cars go you know f up in the air people go flying of course you can run through pedestrians and you can even pick up pedestrians and cars uh pretty much almost anything in the game that's liftable you can pick it up dumpsters and throw them into other objects as you see fit you can also rip light poles straight out of the ground uh and just use it as a melee weapon like as a baseball bat uh you can also derail trains upon collision or jumping there's also a weird kind of hulk clap that uh, that he does, he literally just like claps really loud, and it kind of creates a sonic boom that sends anything in front of the Hulk flying into oblivion. <laughs> just ridiculous. There's a there's some clipping issues here and there, but um, yes. it's a mod. Yes, I'm trying to find him do the clap. I I found him picking up some cars and throwing them. You can aim the cars as you would anything that you're holding in, right. in Grand Theft Auto. Oh, he's got the police officer. Yep. <laughs> just check. The police officer. He threw him so hard that it moved the car. Oh, there's, there's the, the clap. There's that there's clap. clap. So kind of a nice little impact He's there. Clap the, yeah, does a little big big boom in front of him. Boom. Cool. You can also spawn a Hulk enemy. They didn't really specify what that meant. I'm thinking it's just another Hulk that's AI that you can battle against. That'd be cool. Uh, they didn't show in the video, but if you are looking for a challenge, you can try taking on a version of yourself. Nice. Yeah. It gives you something to actually fight against. That's, yes. That's a good idea. So go ahead and uh, download that at your own risk. Because it could be infected with viruses. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on to the next story, we've got another Fallout 4 story that, uh, building a little bit off of Paul's, he did briefly mention Fallout 4. It was for something uh, somewhat unrelated, but we are yet again talking about NVIDIA here. Uh, it's because Fall unrelated, it's the same game. Well, yes, but I mean, what the thing you were I, talking I about, the preload. I was talking about Fallout 4, being it, it launches on November 10th or 12th, I think it was 10th. Um, yeah. It's going to be available for preload, so you can preload it before it actually launches. Right. Yes. Okay. So we are talking about the same game. Gameworks. Fallout 4 is going to feature Gameworks. Right. Oh boy, oh boy. Now, I do have a straw poll to go along with this story, because it is a bit of a controversial debate, uh, the whole Gameworks issue. Uh, my, my question right off the bat is, how does the implementation of Gameworks in a game affect your purchasing decision of that said game? 
Um, so going back, I mean, remember Witcher 3 launch as well as Project Cars? There was a big, huge controversy with Gameworks being implemented into each of those uh, and how it kind of stifled the performance or was, you know, allegedly stifling the performance of AMD graphics users where they weren't seeing as high of frame rates as their uh, NVIDIA or Team Green counterparts. And a lot of people were saying it was kind of a black box uh, solution that was just impossible to work with. Uh, the de developer said it wasn't anything on their end. The, you know, there were some claims and allegations that you know Nvidia had purposely uh, made the the technologies of GameWorks run better or more optimized for for Nvidia hardware. So, is this a toxic, or is this you know is this toxic to the gaming industry? There's all these questions. Anyway, uh, Nvidia has aimed to solve some of this by releasing. Um, brand agnostic, or I'm, I'm sorry, for releasing uh, like license, licensing mm -hmm. for their uh, source code. So they're making it a bit more open source than it was before. Okay. They've made some efforts <laughs> to kind of uh, appease the, the community, more or less. Uh, also, in games like Witcher 3, there's now options for you to, to, to adjust the setting of your hair works, for example. So okay. instead of just being completely crushed by enabling game works, only having like a simple on-off toggle setting, you can adjust the different anti-aliasing um, uh, or the granularity of the anti-aliasing for hair work so that it's not as taxing. Uh, you have a bit more flexibility there. Anyway, for Fallout 4, it's going to be featuring a lot of these settings from uh, features in GameWorks, including ambient occlusion to shadowing uh, and all, all sorts of different lighting effects. Um, and uh, the question I have is, is this going to be an issue for a lot of gamers now? Has, has NVIDIA already overstepped their bounds and ruined the reputation of GameWorks? Or has this kind of blown over and no one cares anymore? And it's just like, well, if I like the game, I'm going to deal with it. It's GameWorks, I'll get around it. Uh, I, I just don't know what where the community lies anymore because it's already been several weeks, if not months, since uh, since this whole debacle. So that's why, hence the straw poll. I'm curious to know what you guys think, um, and also what. Uh, also, there's another. Whoa! I actually forgot one big point. Oh. Uh, the minimum requirements for Fallout 4 are have been released, and they're quite interesting because on one end it says you need a GTX 550 Ti oh that's pretty easy to run the game <coughs> uh, and on the other hand you've also got a requirement for a Radeon HD 7870 that is a much more powerful card than a GTX 550 Ti Kyle right so does this have any implication to you know or is this any kind of indication that GameWorks is going to once again be affecting uh, or, or favoring NVIDIA hardware um, Obviously, minimum requirements are just, you know, sometimes they're hearsay and they're not always uh, completely relevant or indicative of what kind of hardware you need to run the game. But the fact that it lists it here, uh, you know, a team red card that's almost twice as fast as the team green card to run the same game can be a bit concerning for, for some, uh, you know, AMD users. But again, we'll, we'll see how it how it all plays out. I gotta wait for those benchmarks. Yeah. <clears throat> so speculation right now. Let's see what the uh, what the straw poll says. Oh yeah, we did a straw poll. See what you guys think about game works. Nobody cares. No one cares. I could care less. Ah yes. I'll buy a game with or without it. Indifference <laughs> is the best. Or I disapprove, policy. but I'll still buy it anyway. Right. I, I had a feeling that um, would rank pretty high up there as well. Only a few people who who feel it's crippling the industry, um, which, I mean. Yeah, you could argue both sides. You could argue the side of, of the of the consumer. You know, I just want to buy the game that just came out and play it on my hardware, and it should play as good as it can play on my hardware. Right. Uh, whereas on the side of you know, if you're looking at Nvidia or AMD for that matter, I mean, Nvidia, I think it's gets. I mean, they've done more stuff with GameWorks, I think, to warrant some of the criticism that they get. Right. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, you, you you don't want it to be specially designed just for the one graphics card that hap or the series of graphics cards that happens to be the opposite team from the graphics card that you currently have. So right, but I mean, Nvidia for their part would say, well, we're trying to differentiate, you know, our products. We're trying to show here's what here's the benefit you get by going with an Nvidia product and stuff like that. So right. um, I I tend to take the side of the consumer. However, yeah, it's always difficult to where to draw the line. But uh, anyway. That wraps it up for tech news. Moving Yay. on to our next segment, we've got some hot and heavy hardware Indeed we do to talk about. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Four items that I wanted to discuss today. Very exciting. The first of which is the Avexer S100 
SSD. It is an LED SSD, the really? first of its kind. Never before seen. It, uh, it actually features an, a built-in LED accent lighting around it, as well as the Avexor logo can change colors. Uh, actually, it doesn't change colors, but it does more of a breathing effect. You can buy different models in different colors. So you can, God, you can buy... This is more, God, according to their video, God requested this. God has no. re put in a request. They, did a, they started with a Bible, a Bible quote. God said, let there be light. And then a Vexir made oh, it so. From the video, that's yes. Pretty, that's a pretty... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty bold statement the right there. series. Avexir has some really cool light up hardware. They got the plasma, like the, the like memory stuff. with the plasma on it and all that kind of stuff. Right. Right. Brings um, thunder. It's pretty cool looking, but ultimately it's just lights, you know? Yeah. Um, so uh, Performance is pretty much expected. It's nothing out of the ordinary. It's 540, 450 megabytes uh, per second read and write, respectively. 80,000 IOPS at random 4K write. Um, Capacities are pretty standard, 120, 240, and 480 in various LED color options, as I mentioned. Can you tell which of these two uh, ones has the LED lights on it? That one. This one. That one so does. The one on the right. That one. That's lighting up. I didn't LED even know lights. that there was an SSD there next is, to it. There is. It's too dark. I had no idea. Like, look at the difference. Yeah. This one's lighting up. It uh, looks thick. It looks. It looks like it's got way more than that's a seven one, or nine millimeter Z height. That's one thing I was gonna say. It looks. It looks a bit fatter than a standard seven mm -hmm. millimeter drive, even a nine millimeter. Um, but guess what, Paul? What? If you what like this SSD and you want it to be made and manufactured so you can buy it eventually, you can actually support them on Indiegogo. Yeah, Indiegogo. Because Avexor is now an indie company that needs your help. I don't know. Aren't they an established? manufacture products for that's it. what i thought that's what i thought so i was a bit surprised when i saw in this article that they actually have a crowdfunded campaign to raise money for this ssd um which doesn't really make sense to me uh, their goal is fifty thousand dollars they've only met uh, they've a raised fraction about fifteen hundred a fraction days. of that and it's been two days i don't know it doesn't seem like first off well your battery's low first off my battery's gonna die and why the hell is a Vexor? Why are they running an Indiegogo campaign? I don't know. I don't know. Are they just? Are they in the shitter? <clears throat> like, they're not the biggest memory manufacturer out there, but they're established. I but, mean, they have booths at. Uh, they have. They have. A, they had a booth at, at Computex. I guarantee cost more than fifty thousand dollars. But RGB. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> and it had like way more LEDs on it. Yeah, it had a bunch of LEDs. There's stuff. nothing expensive. Or, or yeah. cost costly about LED accent lighting. So the fact the, that they're just adding this onto their SSDs, I don't know why that's such a big deal. I think it's like it's it's a little bit in the way of like, you know, they wanted to make this product. They're trying to get it approved by whoever at the company, you know, makes the makes the calls on those types of things. And they're like, no, this is going to cost too much investment of money, and we don't know that we'll be able to sell them because that's always a concern for something like this. Are we going to invest some money and create the products, and then the products aren't going to sell well? Which is a legitimate concern if you're making a, a standard SATA SSD right now when, you know, their SATA SSDs are still very good and very popular and very, you know, they're all over the place. But So maybe it was just one guy's initiative. to another standard. So, yeah. Um, it's, this to me... <clears throat> well, clearly no one wants it, it. It reminds me of like a pre-order situation. They're looking for pre-orders for this product. Yeah. Um, by, by people investing in, in the Indiegogo. And but that's a weird way to do it. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little weird for me. I don't know. If you're like a hardware startup, if you're some dude who had an idea for a product and you like made a, you know, I feel like that's more of what Indiegogo is for. Right. It's for like a person or a small group of people or a, sm a very small company or something. So what? Um, the reason why I'm not, I'm a little hesitant about this is because I don't want this to be the first of many uh, large companies to start following this type of marketing format where you start to see like Corsair's Kickstarter page for like their new Strafe keyboard or something like that because yeah. I, I feel like that kind of dilutes what these really great websites are actually for you know independent startup companies that you know have something new to the table that don't have the funding you know what I mean because otherwise they're going to get buried they're going to get all these indie companies are going to get buried by companies like Avexer oh, yeah. um, and uh, I don't know I don't think that's cool so I don't know hopefully this this uh, doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't look like it is. 
Um, it, it's pretty sad. I mean, I, you and I could probably have raised more than fifteen hundred dollars in two days Maybe. from like making sausage. Like, but, but, call, we, but we have more sympathy sausage. from people because we're just two dudes. We're not like an established manufacturer of, of hardware that already sells stuff. I know. No one has reason to trust and our it, sausage. Yeah, that's, that's the crazy yeah. thing. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, moving on to the next product. This is the NZXT Q Plus. Plus. Or, or Hewitt. I'm going to call it the Hewitt. Hewitt. Because it's like a T on the end. That sounds cute. Uh, it's an LED lighting device. So that you can light up your fancy rig and make it all look all glowing, glitzy, and fancy and stuff. It's going to be the new standard for uh, Pit My PC here. Yes. So it's like a little module. It's like about the size of a two and a half inch drive, but much thicker. Uh, it's got an LED accent on it itself. Um, you basically plug LED strips into it. So they have to be NZXT branded. LED strips, I believe. You can host up to eight LED strips, and you can control the different colors. It's RGB. It's RGB. You can control it through the CAM software, which is also NZXT's, uh, you know, in-house software that they've created. That's some fancy. cool stuff. Some cool stuff the LEDs can do. They can react to changes in your PC thermals. So based on you know if your CPU or GPU gets hot. Uh, it can change color there, or different audio levels, so it can dance to music, essentially, um, and uh, also your FPS. Your FPS? That's what it says. Okay. So if you get really high frame rates, so your then whole it computer starts turning... will like turn red if your FPS drops below thirty or something like something that. Something like that, <laughs> right? Because you know your your the LED accent lighting in your computer is always the best indication of how your frame rate is. This video is pissing me off. <laughs> <clears throat> because it's just a bunch of because rings. it's just a bunch of like super close ups of stuff you have like what the hell is that what is what is what are we looking at right there's just colors in my face it's a it's a slut and video close ups and yeah I'm gonna I, call the I'm gonna call these types of videos slut videos <laughs> because they're really just all for show they don't teach you anything yeah. they, they're not informative it's just like ooh eye candy look at this it looks so sexy ah, that's, a, that's a slut video yep. right there um, Slutty video NZXT, nice product. Though. You heard it first here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these look great. I really want one. Uh, five, it requires five volts of DC power. Connects to your PC via USB, I should add. Um, and it's going to come in at around $60 USD with, includes... with, four, with four strips included. That's good. Uh, you even get a magnetic or an adhesive option. Oh. Uh, so magnetic if you are any case ever or adhesive if you're Lee and Lee or... Um, aluminum. aluminum. If your case is made of aluminum, do it. I'm trying to. I was trying to think of all the case manufacturers that only do like aluminum, like Lee and Lee, Inwin. Like I can't really think of many others that that only. There's a do. lot that do an aluminum case, but not that are like almost exclusively aluminum. Right. That's what I was uh, trying to go and, for. Antec does some aluminum, although that's maybe older. Yeah. In fact, the newer stuff I don't see quite as much with Antec. No, they're new. Uh, the S10. That is, is that aluminum? It's like thick aluminum. Oh, okay. Um, you could always... Rosewell has some aluminum cases. Anyway. Sweet. Uh, moving on. Asus has come out with a new R9 Nano. That's hey. all white. It's a white as Nano. As the article says, because winter is coming. Winter is coming. This is a perfect, uh, perfect GPU to snuggle up with in the cold the cold winter, as it does get a little, little warm and toasty. Um, it's white. What do you want? It's a nano. What do you want from me? It's a white freaking nano. <clears throat> yeah, right. Is there anything at all different aside from it being a white shroud? Is the cool there's there's not even any word on a backplate because they don't have any images of the PCB itself. Oh. So we don't know if it's going to just be a regular PCB or backplated. Okay. Uh, end of November release is when you can expect it. Maybe we'll find out more. It's coming sort of soon. Yeah, a little bit in a uh, month or so. Uh, Nocturne Kitty says, "ONFG me want." <laughs> I, I'm right there with you, Kitty. Um, this does look pretty sexy. Uh, will save you, definitely save you the time and hassle it would take to spray paint uh, your own R9 Fury Nano if you were interested in modding it in the given color. Indeed. Um, but yeah, good on good on ACs for for switching it up a bit. You know, not everyone's into the red and black theme that uh, ASUS even themselves have have prided themselves on. I'm saying <clears throat> all the same words now. I um, saw. I saw JJ posting uh, some tweets of this earlier, but I don't think he posted any pictures of the back of it. Mm. And then I think, did Josh have one? Josh? Fractal Josh? <clears throat> yeah, he was building a system. I saw he him tweeting one? about building a system, but I don't Does know. Does Josh have one? Uh, yeah. 
He does? No, oh, that's, it's, that's the white, the it's the white 9, 80, nine it's a 970, 970, 970 turbo. Right. Yeah, 970 turbo. Oh, interesting. So he's doing an all white build? Because I saw the Define um, R5 white right there. I'm doing an all white has, build. That's not fair. You are? Uh, mm. He has a Define R5 in oh, white. Oh, no, that was JJ. That was a JJ post. Yeah. Okay. But that's got to be what Josh is using. Too. Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't know. It's a 6600K. He's doing it. Uh, Gigabyte Z170N Gaming 5 motherboard, which is red and black, so... I don't know, maybe it's not white. I, I don't know. Red, black, and white? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, at least he's not copying me completely. Okay. That, that's okay. That's good. Um, what were we talking about? The Asus White AMD... That's all I have to say about that. R9 Nano. It looks cool. Cool. The end. All right. Moving on to the next story. Corsair. Corsair. Uh, Strafe. Strafe. RGB. Just repeat the RGB. <laughs> this is easy. This, this is, is so fun. easy. This is fun. <laughs> uh, with Silent Cherry MX switches. Yeah. This is going to also be, I'm going to say this a lot on this episode, but it's true. <clears throat> First of its kind. Again, uh, to utilize the new Cherry MX Silent switches. Simply called Cherry MX Silent. All right. That's pretty straightforward. So, so what what is the main feature of these switches? You might ask. They're really loud. They make so much noise. They can be heard from They're a mile there away. To announce to other people that you are there. Because the people, the folks at Cherry have a sense of humor and irony. No, that's not true at all. Okay. Um, they're supposed to be. They're engineered to be up to thirty percent quieter. What I hate about this article is that it doesn't say what, how much, doesn't say what they're quieter than. 30, quieter, 30% oh. quieter than what? If they're quieter than browns, it's not much quieter. Exactly. They're, no, no, if they no, are no. quieter than browns, that, brown, that is a good indication. Good. If they're quieter than, like, than blues, MX greens, then, yeah. Or greens, then, not. right. So, uh, mm, mm, mm. Um, how do they do this? No, there's no rubber O-rings. They're not using O-rings. That's for the plebs, yo. Uh, Cherry MX silent switches right, use... You can eight. demonstrate this. What are you doing? Shirt. What are you... Oh, okay, so we have the graph right here. Uh, we totally planned this. This is a new Cherry Max Silent switch right here. You can see it's much quieter. It doesn't make any noise. Yep. And, uh, and it's soft, and, too. And then you, you, it's basically... Or here, here, here's, here's the deal. It uses a patented, fully integrated noise reduction system that's built into every key. Okay? So no O-rings. It's just completely built in natively, greatly reducing the bottoming out and the spring back noise. That's a spring. And you also, okay. do, you also do get the tactile feel. Uh, although there was no mention of of whether or not there's going to be that bump. <laughs> uh, if you look right... Oh, I'm sorry. I lightly brushed my nipple there. I'm sorry, there's, it's just a, the switch is so, titular. so tantalizing. Uh, and, of course, other than that, you're going to get full RGB lighting, a single USB 2.0 pass-through for whatever, uh, wrist rest, custom keycaps for FPS and MOBA. 160 bucks. <gasps> 160. That's... Uh, You'll be paying right, a it's not 10 keyless. Pretty penny. Here's a picture of it again. Yes. Uh, Corsair has an exclusive on these that i know right um and it is a little bit of a different design than than the current uh boards the strafe so right. uh get some texture on some of the keys there and that kind of thing yeah interesting yeah it comes with custom keycaps for you know your wasd standard qwer corsair goes through a lot of cherry switches yes they do they tend to pop the cherries they go through like an obscene amount of cherry switches yes they do it's crazy uh, that's pretty much all I have to say for hot and heavy hardware. Yay. So we can go ahead and move on to our next segment. What's the that? ever What's so the popular segment, Pimp My PC. Pimp my PC. Woo! The blatant ripoff segment from Matt Philly at Squash and TV. Uh, his his show Pimp My Setup is really great and it's better than ours because it came first. He actually created it and then we ripped him off because that's how we roll here at Awesome Hardware. Like go ahead should, and check him out. I feel like you should update our lower thirds for Pimp My PC. Yeah, I think. Uh, People are starting to get more and more confused. <laughs> You're like, what the hell? <laughs> the hell does that mean? There's ostriches. Oh, come on. It's it's brilliant. This is all the right. internet. It all makes sense. Starting off with Skulchula. Skulchula. Skulchula Hunter. Uh, Skulchula. He has a 3570K base system at 4.2 gigahertz, a 750 Ti, an H80 liquid cooler, 8 gigs of RAM, right. RGB color changing slash white theme. Uh, what case is this? This, this is, is a handle. striker. Striker? No, no, no. No, it's not. Striker would have a uh, scout. It's a scout. Storm scout. That's small. Yeah, scouts. Scout in white. Yeah. Oh, it is RGB. Yes, it is. Uh, so that's a hail. That's an NZXT power supply. It's a hail eighty. Oh, even the 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 fans are RGB too. Oh, uh, up top. 
It looks like they Games are. RGB. Right? They look. They, well, they look like they're multicolored. Oh yeah, they're definitely multicolored up on top. That's kind of cool. So, right. so basically, you've just got like a, a party going on here. It is a party. A bit of a rave. Um, there's there's no real like hardcore color scheme here because I think you you've just designed this case to be flexible or the, the system to be flexible with the RGB LEDs everywhere. Uh, but internally, your components wise, you've got blue memory with and your RAM actually has blue LEDs on that. Um, so I mean, unless your RAM <coughs> LED accents were RGB as well, it's kind of difficult to match that with every other color on the spectrum. You've also got uh, a white power supply and a white rim, it looks like, going around your radiator fan for that Corsair cooler. Um, so white, very neutral. The, thing that, the great thing about having a white case and, and RGB LEDs is that the white will just reflect any color that you assign the LEDs to. Yeah. So you can kind of have any color system you want at any time. Uh, but when you throw in the blue LEDs on the RAM, for instance, it kind of throws that off a little bit. It becomes a bit more noticeable. Um, so that's probably the one thing that I would say aesthetic-wise if you wanted to really have that flexibility. Um, granted, if you wanted to be blue and you wanted a blue theme, there's probably no better RAM than those things that you have in there uh, already. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as, uh, as we usually say <clears throat> with uh, Pimp My PC, it could use a little bit of uh, work on the cable management. It's not p bad by any stretch, and you've got some white cable extensions on there. These could just be cinched up. They could be a little bit tauter. Uh, maybe consider even a cable comb if you want it to look really nice. Both the 24 pin and your uh, <clears throat> your six pin for your graphics card there. Um, they could just be cinched up a little bit more. I also noticed your fan is facing up on the power supply, which isn't bad. It's probably just fine. I would have faced it down in this case because you do have a you do have a, a direct you, you know there, there's there's a, ventilation there's stuff. ventilation down there. So um, you would you would allow it to pull in. Uh, uh, fresh air from outside the case rather mm -hmm. than pulling in warmer air from inside. And also that kind of leaves leaves your power supply open to just sucking in any, any kind of little screws or anything that yes. might fall into it. I've had that happen before. The power supply is mounted up and you know, you're know you undoing the radiator uh, fans or whatever at the top of your case and just like a screw slips, happens all the time and falls straight into your power supply. You gotta shake it out. You uh, take the whole system and put it upside down to get yeah. it out of there. So if you have the, if you have, if you have a case that can handle it, go ahead and flip it. Other than that, nice looking system. I yeah. think functionally it looks really well. Oh! What? Mother of Jesus! What? Mother of Jesus, I just saw something. What happened? Look at the top of the hard drive cage. What is that? What is that? <laughs> oh, there's an Apple logo. Thing. That is an Apple sticker. That is a sneaky... Mother of God. See, maybe it's a Hackintosh. <gasps> what? Nah, I'm just, I just <laughs> wanted to be dramatic. Look, I got, I got nothing against... Well, stickers, stickers are fine. <laughs> Here's the way I look at it: like if you're an all if you're an all Apple user and you buy all the Apple pre-made products and everything, that's fine. It works for you. That's sure, fine. sure. You know, no problem, no problems there. But you know, if you want to build a computer and make a Hackintosh and load Apple's operating system onto it, that's actually like can be more challenging than building just a standard computer with a Windows or Linux, even for that matter. Right, right. So, I don't. <laughs> I try not to hate on the on the Hackintoshes and the people who throw the Apple logos in there. Although Chad is Chad, Chad would disapprove is, strongly. Chad is disagreeing with me strongly right now, but um, that's what 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 can I say? Yeah. Look, if you're buying your own hardware and you're building your own system, then then right. you should have the freedom to use whatever software you want. I agree, and I will say that if it, if this is a, if this is a Hackintosh build, then it makes a lot more sense. Yes, it would. All right. Thank you very much, Skulchua. For sending that system in, go ahead and hopefully you'll survive the rest of the show with chat all on your ass now. <laughs> uh, next system we've got is from Ken. Ken, Ken thank you for sending AKA this in. Logic Gear on Twitter. Logic Gear, yes. We've, we, we've played several games together, and uh, Ken's awesome guy. You got a 4690K. Yes. Z97 Gaming 5, GTX 760 Superclock, 8 gigs of Sniper GDR, G, or DDR3 memory from uh, G-Skill. Right. And uh, oh, he's got the PC part picker link there too. So we'll look at that in just a second. But uh, Kyle, any immediate thoughts from the build overall? Uh, so first off, this is actually a pretty clean looking system. Cable management is actually not something I need to really point out here. Everything looks really clean. Um, if I'm getting really nitpicky, I, I do see that there's a kind of a, a fan cable that's, that's going drooping down from your rear exhaust that looks like it's going to a port that's near your uh, CPU cooler, up here, um, which I guess could be routed a little bit more cleanly. Or in the very top left, there's also a cable that's kind of coming 
uh, from the corner there. But again, super nitpicky here. Color coordination is good. I think there are some things that you could do to spice it up. If you really wanted to, you could get some black and red sleeved cables. Um, if you don't, if you're not in the, if you're if you're not willing to actually spend the time to create your own custom cables because it, it is very time consuming, you can check out Cable Mod. They uh, they kind of customize it for you as well. Or um, Mainframe Customs will actually do some really high end Telio sleeving for you uh, that you can uh, pretty much tell them exactly what you want. And then because uh, I think there's a lot of potential for more integration of red. Uh, because you have you already have a lot of red accents on your motherboard, but nothing else in the case really stands out as as such. So maybe having some red cables in there. Uh, I would probably take off the power supply. EVGA G2 mm. power supplies are really reliable, and, and I like them a lot. Are you? But they're stickers. Are you only looking at the single picture on Twitter? Yes. There's like five really good pictures on the PC per picker link. Are there? Yeah. Are they? Are he's they? Got, he's got blue LEDs inside, for example. Are they all? Are, are they different from what I'm seeing? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I've been showing them to chat. Sorry, there's blue LEDs inside, which is I have to assume those are blue. There's a chance they're white, but I think they're 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 blue. They're only white if the camera's acting weird or something like that. Um, hmm. Again, with these cleaner pictures, your cable management looks really nice. Looks good with the side panel on. Um, Love the Derp Squad sticker on Derp the front Squad of the case. Derp Squad sticker always representing. The uh, but but still everything I like said it, goes. Looks like your SATA plug on one of your hard drives is about to pop out. That's, that's, that's my only feedback. <laughs> it could just be a little loose or something. Just a little crooked. Yeah. It probably still works, though. But other than that, man, other than, you know, spicing it up with some cables, uh, maybe upgrading your cooler in the future if you're going to be doing some more heavy overclocking, something that looks a little bit more... But with a, with a Hyper 212, you, you, you've you got 90 95% of anything you're going to Oh, yeah, of course. I just mean on, yeah. on, like, the aesthetics front. Um, honestly, this is a really good, <coughs> solid build. I wouldn't change much. Yep. Thank you, Logic Gear. Uh, next up, we've got Oliver. 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 Oliver Twist. Oliver Toad. Oliver. Oliver Toad. Oh, Toad. Uh, he duct taped the PSU logo, and he has a build log on PC Part Picker. Nice. All right. Nice. Thank you for also taking lots of good uh, pictures with the uh, with ample lighting here. Um, just taking a glance at the interior, the main section of your system, uh, there's a lot of work that can be done with the cables. Um, the one that stands out to me the most, actually two of them, is the one that's going right over your CPU cooler. You could easily route that around it because it just looks really nasty going straight over the fan blades. Uh, and also it's probably not the best idea just in case you know, uh, somehow the, the cable gets pushed in, it gets snagged on, on that fan. I mean, it, it's a pretty sharp fan because it's a smaller blade and it has to spin faster RPMs. I've gotten nicked a couple times on Intel stock coolers, so uh, probably not the best idea to have the, the cable right in front of it. It just looks a little, little messy as well. Also, the, the rear exhaust fan again, uh, there's just this droopy cable that could be routed. You know, you can actually zip tie a good portion of excess cable from, from any cable in your case, really, uh, and kind of tuck it away. I usually, for the, for the rear exhaust, I like to, to zip tie up my cable as short as possible and then put it, stick it behind <laughs> the actual fan so yeah. that you can't see it. And then I route it through, like, you know, the, the, the rear I.O., you know, if I can, between, like, the, the Intel Gigabit Ethernet and the audio ports. What, I don't know what this red arrow is pointing at. What is the red arrow pointing at? I'm confused. Ventilation. Ventilation. These are hex. These are hex vents. I, I, I'm really not sure. Huh. Right. Also, bear in mind you're looking at the, the the one of the build log pictures. There's no graphics card in there yet. Ah. Uh, the graphics cards com comes in there later. Let's see. Oh wow, there's a lot um, of pictures here. I will say you have lots of room on your desk, and don't put your computer on the floor. Yeah. Uh, even though it's kind of clean down there. Either get it something that puts it a couple feet up above, a little stand or something, a little bookshelf or something to pop that up on, make a shelf on the wall, put it up there, or just put it on top of the desk, because there's lots of room on top of the desk there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, yeah, looking at these other pictures that Paul pointed out, it does look a lot cleaner. Um, and you've got a pretty strong, you know, black and black and blue theme going on here. Yeah, it's a deep cool case, too. We don't see uh, Deep Cool's a pretty big company, but I don't see a whole lot of their cases around. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe more popular in the, uh, the eastern countries. Uh, but thank you very much for that, Oliver. Oliver Toad. Uh, next up, we've got Spunky Chickens. Spunky Chickens. Let's let's see if his rig is as spunky as his name. With a, with a Flickr album. Flickr. Right. Good old Flickr. So we got the shot of the desk. Desk shot. Looks pretty clean there. I like yeah. the wooden uh, basketball hoop game. Uh, Gaming? Well, this is the same case. He's me just saying don't see many deep cool cases. This what? is the same exact one. No. Yeah. My goodness. What are the odds? That is crazy. It's a conspiracy. Next week on conspiracy theories. All right, so why is there a picture of money? We are kind of missing. Here's here's okay. kind of a wide shot of the case. All yeah. right, uh, power supply. Ooh, ooh. All right. Yeah. Um, there's some serious cable management issues going on here that could be resolved by recabling. Yep. Uh, I also see that your computer is sitting just right on the, the carpet. carpet. Uh, which. I was about to say maybe flip that power supply, but, don't. but if you're keeping your computer on the carpet right there, don't. <laughs> Leave the power supply with the fan face up. Fire will ensue. But please, ensue. please get a, just get a piece of plywood. Get something. Yeah. I mean, if... A, a, a few books. Yeah. Books. <laughs> the carpet's literally like, the like worst. Like, really, you want it a couple feet off, but, 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 I mean, if you can just get a piece of plywood under there, it will provide much... If you do that, well, then... if you look here, Paul, it looks <clears> like... He was just putting it on the carpet for the picture taking. Okay. Because so, look at this picture. I don't, I don't know. I don't he's, know how Flickr works. He's got it. Uh, he's got it in a little shelf, on, and it's on a piece of wood. Oh, there's a little shelf. All right, that's that's better. slightly better. That's still really low, though. You're still gonna pull in yeah. way more dust into the system. You're gonna have to clean out the dust in that. Right. Two three months earlier than you might have otherwise. Oh, that's a nice house. I hate these stupid ads. <laughs> it's a lending. They keep showing me pictures of money. Like, <laughs> we know you're poor. It's like what the fuck. <laughs> Anyway, just just rip out the power supply and get a new one. Yeah. And rewire <laughs> everything. Watch my video on cable management. There's a bunch of other good ones too. Um, yeah. Clean your computer. Yeah. Overall, it's functional, but um, I mean, this is this. Actually, look at the look at Toad's. Wait, what's his, what was his name? Toad. Friendly, friendly Toad. Friendly. Oliver Toad. Oliver Toad. Look at Oliver, Oliver Toad's build, because he's got the same case <laughs> as you. And uh, he's got he's got some pretty decent cable management going on there. Just I mean, he's 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 cinched some stuff up. He's used to space behind the behind the motherboard tray. Yes, use Toad right. as a good example. Cool. Thank okay. you for that one. One more here. This is Samuel Anstey. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Samuel Jackson. Sam, no. I'm gonna say, oh, or, we're so honored or, to have you. Or Sam Droid. Sam Droid. Um, all right. His build needs a name. Guys in <laughs> chat, can we help? Can we help Sam out? With a name for his build, this is a Fractal Divine uh, Define R5, an FX8320, a Hyper 212 Evo cooler, Asus M5A97 motherboard, um, uh, 2x4 gig crucial kits, and a gigabyte, uh, looks like a GTX 950, or a 7, I'm sorry, a 750 Ti graphics card. Right. So, and it looks like he's in a Define R5. Wait, no. GPU is an MSI R9280. Or Define R4. That was weird. Oh, it's Define R5. Why are there two? The power supply looks scary. How come here it says Gigabyte GV N750OC, and over here it says... MSI. Weird. Anyway. Uh, all right. Oh, OCZ motherboard. power supply. <clears throat> oh, was that, I was looking at the motherboard, not the... Yeah. Okay, never yeah. mind. So, honestly, if you had just swapped out all the cables for black ones, it would look like the, 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 the overall look of your system would go from like a $50 rig to like a $1,000 rig. I mean, that's how just, that's just how cheap ketchup and mustard cables make a system look. Yeah. Um, if, if you just had nice black sleeved cables in there or white or blue, any three of those colors would work by the way, it would just instantly up the value of, of the entire system. Um, and also, People are calling it the melting pot. Okay, called or uh, Crayola. Crayola. Pink Panther. Pulse. Uh, uh, call it. I'm offended. What about Destructor the Merciless? <laughs> just, <laughs> just a looks, pretty good one. Looks wicked. Uh, AMD Heat Blaster like yeah. that. Medusa. <laughs> Medusa. That's Cables everywhere. Don't look it in the eye. Um, apart from that, maybe get some some nice blue memory sticks. 
Get some Avexers. A blue, a blue memory kit. Get some Avexers. Yeah, with, with the, the blue plasma. The plasma inside that. Because right cool. now you've got those nasty green. Uh, you know, I mean they're functional, but they're just nasty. They're all green. Yep. Yeah, most of the visual issues with this build, I think, come down to <coughs> the cabling on this power supply, which is an OCZ power supply. OCZ doesn't make power supplies anymore. They made some okay ones when they did make them, but um, they also made some bad ones, which got them a bad rap. Uh, swapping that power supply out or all the cables, and then that SATA cable, like Kyle said, I think would be a huge difference. And then the memory, again, is functional. It doesn't stand out that much, but that would be the next step, I think. Yeah. Getting that memory swapped out. Thank you very much, Samuel. Thanks, and that's Samuel. going to conclude Pimp My PC for tonight, folks. Uh, we've got one more segment, which is Q&A. Quiz nazies. As always, we take your questions and give you subpar answers, as we always do. Yes. Um, we put this at the end of the show so that we're tired and that uh, we just say whatever pops into our heads. Yes. <clears throat> uh, first question is from Adam JP Tech. He probably didn't even know he was asking a question. Woo! Is, is HyperX RAM food? Yes. I have yes. tried it. Yes, it, it is. Tastes delicious. It is. And uh, doesn't come out well though. It's also non-volatile, so uh, it makes you know it's easy on the stomach. Comes out fast. At about 1,600 megahertz. Wait, no, it's volatile memory. Never mind. I was wrong about that. <laughs> Try to make a... That was a noble effort. Try to make a joke. It just fell, <laughs> fell on its face. Okay. Um, questions. Questions in chat. Uh, questions. Uh, no one's asking questions. Mm -hmm. OCZ looks sad. Liquid versus air. Uh, lately, I've been leaning towards air. I, I can't say uh, air because I have a water cooled system. Yeah, I mean I have a, I have a full water cooled. I mean, there. but that's like it's that's like it's a separate it's an art piece, piece, you know, it's an art piece. like something like that. Of course, yeah. if you have the time and the spare money and and everything to invest right. in a liquid cooled system, it's awesome and it's a lot of fun and it's a challenge and you learn things and all that stuff. So that's great. But when it comes down to just like I'm building a system, should I get an air cooler or a liquid cooler? Get an air. Practically speaking, spending thirty to fifty bucks on an air cooler, which gets you 95% of the performance of a liquid cooler and lets you overclock usually just the exact same amounts and then you don't have to deal with the potential of like leaks or like the pump dying or anything like that. Yeah. Air cooling is just simpler, more cost effective and everything. But um, you know, if you're if you're looking for the best and you know, you want you want to build a super sweet system and you want to have that liquid cooling and, and be able to tell people, "Look, it's my water-cooled processor." Um, or you like the way it looks or yeah. something. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's not like you get nothing out of it. Uh, liquid cooling is more efficient. Um, it'll cool your processor down more. You might be able to overclock a little bit more. But again, if you have a good air cooler, chances are you're going to be limited by the overclocking capabilities of your processor or your graphics card, if you're talking about that, right. um, more so than your ability to cool it off fast enough. True. Saturn's mm -hmm. rings, Coca-Cola or Dr. Pepper? Uh, Coca-Cola. Dr. Pepper. <clears throat> um, will you guys come to PDX LAN if not this time around some other time? Haphazard Damage asks. Uh, I'm not going to be able to make it this time. It's like next week, right? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, but uh, I, I, that would be an event I'd like to go to next year. This year is like the first year that we've both been independent and I've kind of been focusing on a, just a couple main events that I've tried to go to. Right. Next year I want to try to go to some more like LAN events, community events, that kind of thing. Uh, Tech Syndicate is setting up a LAN, a big LAN up in, I think it's in Seattle, in uh, April. And I, I'm going to definitely try to go to that one. Nice. Yep. Uh, invest in gaming mouse or gaming keyboard? Hmm. Ooh. That's a good question. Uh, honestly, if, if they're both equally shit and you're in equal need of either or... I'd say mouse. I would say... Say, hey, it depends. It depends I, on how bad. I would say mouse because for the longest time, when it came to keyboards, and people were asking like, "What keyboard should I get?" The answer was a fifteen-dollar rubber dome keyboard. <laughs> that was all. Don't matter what brand, just get a fifteen-dollar keyboard because that's all you need, and it works just as fine, and it's just as fast, and functionally does everything exactly the same as a mechanical keyboard. Mechanical keyboards have a different feel. Yeah. Yes, they will last longer, but not necessarily to warrant spending $100 versus 15 Right. Five $15 keyboards will probably last just as long as one $100 mechanical keyboard. So, yeah, for that reason, I'd say get the mouse, because the mouse is... The mouse, I mean, you get more out of, like, the precision of the laser, the optical sensor that you get. You might have more buttons that you can put on there. Uh, but, yeah, I think you can get by more easily with the $15 keyboard 
than with a super cheap mouse. mouse. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, PC building and chill? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Every night. Uh, how goes the Steam controller? Uh, the Nan Dan Nation S. I've, I've been using it here and there. I've had a pretty good time with it so far. Definitely, uh, there's definitely a learning curve to it, and I need to use it more to get more used to it. But um, as, a, as a living room option, because you can use it to control the mouse, it's, it's nice. It's convenient. It's good. it's good to have that. I think it's a nice addition to the repertoire. It's not for everyone. Some people, it's going to piss off. Right. Um, but I think uh, for people who are willing to like sit and use it for a while and kind of get used to where the buttons are and how it reacts and all that stuff, uh, I think it's a pretty good controller. And 50 bucks, wireless, you know, plug and play, works with Windows. Um, right. I think it's pretty decent. Uh, it's MK Plays asks, do I get cable <coughs> extensions for custom modded, for custom modded ones, or do I buy full length modded custom sleeve cables? Depends on the power supply that you're working with. Yeah. Some power supplies will. Like some manufacturers are to the point where they offer cable kits you can buy specifically if you have a fully modular power supply. If you want to be safe, either get get different cables directly from the manufacturer who you bought it for, or just get extensions. I would never. I mean, I don't know. It's. I just. I wouldn't Risky. risk. I wouldn't risk buying new modular cables from anywhere other than the med manufacturer. Yeah. If they cross a line or something like that. Uh, the great thing yeah, about extensions yeah. is that you can use them from power supply to power supply. Yeah. So they're nice. they're pretty much good. I mean, that universal connection isn't going to change. <coughs> so you're pretty oh. much safe on that. Better investment. Lord Mustang GTS, are we doing an after show? Yes, we are. And Kyle, yes. in fact, actually has a question for I you guys. I do. I'm going to go ahead and post it in chat right now. The question is, what game should we play tonight? Yeah. There's a couple options. Uh, Paul is going to be playing from my house. We are going to have dinner really quick after we end the show. And then we're going to go ahead and jump into a game. So go ahead and let us know which game you want us to play. We've got uh, options like Rocket League, GTA V, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, which we played a couple times a few weeks back, as well as Brawlhalla, which is a game that I recently picked up last night, actually. been playing that a little bit here and there. Super fun so far. It's like a Super Smash Brothers oh. type of... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a clone. It's kind of on its own. Then you'll probably unique, kick my but, ass at it. Uh, but that's okay. Probably. But, um, yeah, we'll if, you guys, if you guys want to see Ask is, or Paul get his ass beat uh, in that game. Go ahead and vote for that one. Uh, but yes, uh, this is also uh, subject to being overruled. So you might be like, oh, I want you to play GTA 5 and we'll still say no. Because we don't feel like it. So this is just really to make you feel like you have an illusion of choice. Um, anyway, I think that's pretty much all we have to say for the show. Indeed. So thank you guys for joining us for episode 36. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Again, check out Paul. Uh, Paul's half of the show on his channel, Paul's Hardware, and we love you guys. Stay tuned for the after party for watching this live. If not, check us out on Tuesdays, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, awesome, twitch.tv slash awesomehardware, and we'll see you guys next week.